Hello and welcome to a quick installation guide on how to install the HP UBA or User Behavior Analytics product on a, in this particular example, a CentOS 6.5 installation system. So um, I will admit that there are a number of things we've preset and configured with regards to this. Uh, we already have a um, uh, CentOS system ready to run. Uh, we have done some basic networking and so on. So for example, just to confirm that I can get to the outside world, uh, I can I can do relevant uh, pings and so on to make sure I can do that. It is actually running on a VM uh, just to show that it is working. Uh, but uh, th this is a, a sample installation. This is not a preferred or best guide uh, in how doing the process. This is just a very quick uh, how to get the system up and working uh, with regards to this. Now, now, uh, I am actually logged in as uh, root uh, because I need to do some various act um, actions to do with regards to being a super user. I do actually have a uh, defined user called ArcSight uh, of which I've just normally created. We can see that there is a, a home folder for me and I've got some software I need to install. As part of the process, I need to double check things like uh, syslogng and also MySQL, uh, which I'll go through the process of doing that now. Now, the first thing I need to do is uh, uh, just confirm what we've got uh, with regards to uh, running system. So uh, I do want to use syslogng, but we'll actually probably just have a quick check. And oh, look, there we have, we see our syslog running. Uh, that's a standard install with regards to uh, CentOS 6.5. We don't actually want that. So uh, we'll come back to that later on, but uh, we'll see that that's running uh, and we'll have to uh, remove that later on. Now, uh, we're in the relevant directory, so the easiest thing to do is actually just get the software. Uh, uh, like I say, I am connected to the outside world, uh, so I can just fedora project.org slash pub slash epl six server, capital F, S, sorry, server. So we'll just pull the RPM down, and then from there we can just install the uh, top level RPM uh, for this, uh, for the uh, packages. And then we'll just go ahead and just make sure we've got everything. Syslog ng dash lib db i. So it's just going to go ahead and uh, find out what it needs to install, download the relevant base components, uh, and uh, get them ready to run. It doesn't take long. It takes a few seconds just to, to pull down the, uh, the basic package for that. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing particularly extravagant as part of that process. Uh, the next stage after this is we actually need to uh, set and um, download and in install the MySQL components. It's pretty straightforward again. Again, we'll just use the, uh, the top level RPM and then do the installation of the various components from there. It's just finishing off the package uh, install for syslogng. Yes, I want to confirm a couple of things here. And yes, it's okay. Take us the install. There goes the install, and we're done. So the next bit we need to uh, get the MySQL stuff. Uh, this is again easier to do to just uh, set this mysql.com slash get slash So we'll get the top level part of that. RPM minus I. So we're actually going to install the RPM. So that's the top part. Uh, and then we just do yum install my SQL. So because we've just done the RPM side of things, it's actually just going to go ahead, uh, find out exactly what we need to do for the install uh, and download all of that. Uh, we can see that it's uh, 
define what it needs to download. Uh, there's about 77 meg in total there. Uh, it, I'm not on the fastest internet connection, but uh, I'll speed this up with regards to playback. It's just going ahead and doing some install here. So there we go, it's finished the install process for MySQL, which is great. Uh, there are a few final uh, tasks we need to just do. Uh, we do need to uh, make sure that we set uh, MySQL to run at boot time. So my S D on, turn the uh, service on. Uh, we just need to double check the file and just make a couple of small uh, changes to the settings that are in that my.cnf uh, and we'll see there's a couple of settings within that that we just need to make an adjustment to so we'll just put a couple of lines in here uh, lower case table Names equal one. It, it's to do with comparisons with the table names. Uh, it's allow you to uh, have uh, all them uppercase, all them lowercase, or evaluate them the same regardless of case. We actually want it to be one, which means it could be uh, stored in lowercase, and the, the comparisons are not case sensitive. It's just for the table names, not for the usernames. Clearly, in our DB file per table equals one. Uh, it's just for the actual running of the software. Uh, we'll write that and we'll come out and that's that. Uh, we also need to uh, start the service. So service mysqld start. Only takes a second. It's a lightweight uh, database and it only just takes just doing the initial setup and run. And hey presto. Uh, we can actually just double confirm that status is running. There we go. So we just need to make sure we got some uh, user access for the uh, HP UBA component to actually connect and communicate with uh, MySQL. So we'll just double check that and set the uh, access rights. So we want to create a user called root with a password and of course this is not recommended but I'm just going to use the default password because this is a VM and clearly you would not use this uh, as a real password uh, for the system as it says not recommended now let's just double check that so my SQL dash u root dash p arcsite and it's logged me in so I can actually get in and do the various things now uh, I also need to allow myself uh, to get access uh, to connect to the database itself so we'll just do that grant all on star dot star so it's everything to root the user we just created uh, at the host name of the machine I'm running is CentOS 65 just as again it's a, it's a VM it's not a real machine identified by Arcsite uh, it's made that change so we're set and ready to run on that one and now we can just do uh, slash q to yep, get the right slash to finish now we're done and that's the database uh, set up and run uh, we do need to just double check a few final quick things with regards to the install ready to run for UBA uh, so what we will do is we'll just uh, user add HP UBA user pass WD HP UBA user uh, give it a user and a password for the user I'm going to use to run the actual component as well uh, I do need to uh, set some relevant components to this to do Y minus F pseudoers and we find the relevant part allow run and 
There we go. We insert into there HP UBA user all equals. And there we go. Just made a small change to that. Now I should be in uh, the relevant directory to actually start the install. Uh, so go back to my home directory, downloads, and there's my executable. So slash hp uba ready to run. And we run that. Now the first thing it's going to do is unpack the GRA to actually run the installer. I'm doing it in graphic mode. There is a, a console install as well. I do find it a little bit easier to use the graphic mode uh, simply because you can see what's doing uh, and it's easier from a uh, video point of view. So let me just shuffle that into the view a little bit. There we go. Next. Confirming some minimum expectations. It is expecting that MySQL is installed, which we have just done. Uh, scroll to the bottom for the uh, terms and conditions. Uh, yes. Uh, now we don't want to install it in root because it's identified me as a user as root. I actually want to put it into the uh, opt folder as per standard uh, Linux installs. So into the HP UVA 1.0, so 1.0 version product. And uh, we hit next. Now we make some changes to the uh, settings for the actual system itself. Now, uh, I do want to make sure uh, that I have the correct uh, resolutions and so on, as I did before. Uh, it, this is a, a VM that's running on um, uh, CentOS 6.5, and that's the machine name that I've given it. The port for the connection for the database is there. Uh, the database will get created, but this is the username that I'm going to create, going to use. Uh, and we did this, uh, we've created that particular user before, if you remember when we uh, finished doing the installation of MySQL. It does do an active check at that point. Uh, if it can't connect, then it will uh, tell you that it can't connect and ask you to double check and confirm. Uh, but it has actually worked there, so it has connected. Uh, now I want to use the actual communications to the system. You can set it as HTTP but I not recommended. We would uh, really insist that you should be doing this through an SSL link, so HTTPS is the way forward. CentOS 6.5. So this is the creation of the SSL certificate as well. So we'll create the password there. Again, I'm just using default passwords here. This is not a recommended way of doing things, uh, but this is just for uh, speed of doing the install. So that's for the certificate. The next is for the uh, super user to log in and use the system so default is admin I'm just going to give it a, a set of default settings we do want to use uh, the syslog ng server which is what we want it's just default because we actually installed it at the very beginning uh, so what's the password uh, very simple there we go it's just doing a check on the sudo just to make sure it works, which it does, and then it's going to go ahead and start the installation process. Uh, as you can see, the steps it's going to go through, it's going to make sure we've got the web component, it's going to do the JDK for the actual software to run, uh, create the uh, folder for the running, create the database, uh, and the schema. So this does take a couple of minutes, doesn't take too long to finish, and off we go. Uh, and it, as you can see, it's actually progressing pretty quickly as, as go, we go through this process. So there we go, it's finished the installation process. There's some final bits we need to uh, complete now. Uh, what it doesn't do is it does not start the service uh, automatically after installation. So uh, there are a few things we need to just double check on that one. Uh, and it's there, we just created the certificates and so on. If you remember, we didn't uh, resolve the issue with the uh, our syslog being uh, a default uh, with regards to uh, uh, CentOS itself, so we can actually see we've got uh, our syslog and syslog running here, so we, we, we can't do that. Um, so let's uh, 
turn some of this off. We turn syslog on, uh, service our syslog, and we'll stop that. So we now stop that. Start syslog ng. We'll just double check what's running again. Uh, it okay. Right. Uh, now we need to start up HBUBA. So helps if I go to the right directory. Uh, run the startup script. And we wait a couple of minutes. This is the first time it's run, so there is a, a few final steps that it's going to go through as part of this process. Uh, so again, we'll just uh, wait a few minutes and let it complete doing this. So there we go, it's uh, finished the initial startup process. Notice the URL that we're using here. Uh, it, it is very specific. We told it to run uh, HTTP SSL, so that's why the port number's there. But actually you must need to, uh, you do need to put that uh, profiler extension to that as well. So uh, let's log into the interface. It's the first time I've run uh, Firefox on this uh, image. Of course, it's a self-signed certificate in this particular example, so I understand the risks. And yes, I want to run an exception, confirm that. And we log in, if you remember, on the uh, admin account, which we set up as part of the install process. First thing it's going to do is it's going to ask us for a license, because we haven't added anything to do with that license or, or uh, uh, provided anything. Uh, so, install the license. We do want to upload one, browse to one. Uh, I do actually have one in my uh, user folder there. Open that, install that license. As part of the process, it kicks you out. And then I'll log back in again. And hey presto. Everything's set, ready to run. Now, what we haven't done is we haven't created any uh, log files to send to it. We haven't created any policies to run uh, or anything like that. So uh, that will be handled on a uh, later video. But I just wanted to show the installation process and the steps required in completing the install of HP UBA. Thank you very much.